So uh, we can start whenever you're ready. We're waiting on you. All right. Hi, uh, Tim, horror obsessive. Uh, actually just finished watching Mad Heidi earlier today. Loved mm -hmm. it. One of the oh, best things I've seen in a while. It, yeah. There's there's homages from everything from the sound of music to like faster pussycat kill kill. How could you not love it? My God. <laughs> um, so just have a few questions, all kind of softball-y, nothing too hard. Um, there are both all for both of you, so you can just answer how you please. Um, so first question, what was something about you know the film when it when it got to you? What was something about it that you went, I have to be a part of this, I need this role? You know, what was something that you were like, I'm in? I think everything, to be honest, like, you know, Heidi is a package, you know, you read the synopsis now, and actually that's the synopsis that Casper and I also got, and it's just nuts. When I try and describe to my friends or my family, you know, the plot, <laughs> it, there is just, there is smiles and laughter and hang on, what are you talking about? And I think for me, being part of something so nuts that so many people put so much love into was something I just, I Im immediately wanted to, to jump to. And also the way that they're trying to break the mold of how films are made in Switzerland, I think is really exciting because it's the first of its kind. And I think that, you know, we can talk about, and I often do talk about the story being what leads it and it does and the genre and the belief that they had in it, but also, they got turned down by so many people to make this. They got turned down by like, you know, the red lights everywhere and got told to change it and do this, that and the other. And actually they persevered and they pushed forward and they found a way to make the film that they wanted to make, that they knew fans would want them to make. And for me, having that, you know, persistence and, and ambition and drive to just keep pushing forward, I wanted to join them in that journey. Nice. Yeah, it's, it's it's incredible how they 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 put all this together and their detail, their attention to detail on the film and everything. When I read the script and I got it, I, my agent was like, "This is wild and crazy." I read it, I'm going, "This is awesome," and I love the Starship Troopers references and I love the <laughs> over top ofness of it. And and then when you get on set, they just uh, it's all this is all done by people that wanted to make a film, like Alice is saying. It's it's all people that love it and wanted to be there. So. Uh, it's all crowd crowdfunded, and they were all the ones that were making it, too. Mm -hmm. So they put their own money in this, and it's all the fans that were extras and actors and directors and people on it. They were all people that helped raise the money for this. And so there's a lot of love for this movie and being made, and there's a lot of attention to details, and, and that was just, it was it was just an amazing project to be involved with. Mm -hmm. Don't Don't hurt me. I've never actually seen Starship Troopers. I'll have to go watch that. And uh, watch this again and see what references there are I can pick up on. Yeah, you'll have to see that because you you know if you haven't seen Starship Troopers, you won't know what I'm talking about. But uh, that is uh, it, it did have that, and they're huge fans of that. They also put like they had Verhoeven, who was the director of Starship Troopers and RoboCop and a lot of other great movies, and Rodriguez and Tarantino and Argento, and they even put Carl Schenkel, who was a Swiss German director that directed Me and Tarzan, who's no longer with us, but they put his name on the name tags of the guards. So there was thought process that you don't even see that in the film, but it's still there. And I think those pieces, like when you have that kind of detail, when there's that kind of attention to detail put into your film, I think that gives you a, more of an opportunity to have something of quality. And that's what this felt like to me. Awesome. So you both kind of touched on it already, but um, was there you know much of a difference with the film being you know entirely crowdfunded? Well, this was my first experience of a feature film. Um, so actually, I didn't necessarily know any different. <laughs> um, but what I definitely could tell was that there was a lot of heart and, you know, that a lot of the extras were also investors and they were coming to just make sure that they did their part. <laughs> um, but coming to make sure that they were they were present and that they were involved and that there was that opportunity for the investors to be as involved as they wanted to be. Because not every investor was an extra, but that was that that was because they chose not to be, you know. But there was, I think it 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 demystified the film industry for a lot of people and it allowed fans to understand how movies are made when you love it. Um but yeah, I, I haven't not been in a big studio film yet. I just, I just rolled and rolled with the punches and went with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
it was awesome. It was awesome to be on the set with Alice too, with this being her first, you know, lead in the movie. Uh, she was amazing and her, and you know, she's a real martial artist. And so, but she's also just uh, an incredible human being with a lot of heart and a lot of love. And she was just there present for everybody and made everybody feel special. And when you have that kind of quality in your lead, then it, it also helps for the film to be better. It's one of the things that I've always said, and it's Stanislavski says it in that actor's handbook, everybody's got to do their part. But especially when you're the lead in the film and the director and the producer, those are the three main people that have to, to really hold it together and then make sure everybody else, you know, is on board too. And, and they all were. And, and when you have your lead like that too, doing that, she really, it, I, it was surprising that it was her first because she was so dang good. <laughs> Well, they, they definitely held it together. <laughs> <laughs> um, so getting into the somewhat nitty gritty details, how did each of you, you know, get into the mindsets of your respective characters? Like Casper, how, how hard was it to get into the mindset of a flamboyant Swiss dictator? Was that just like your natural state? <laughs> My natural state. What I really <laughs> people think I'm an American, but really I'm a Swiss German president slash dictator. Um, <laughs> I had been doing research on uh, working with a, a, a dialect coach for a German film. I was going to do a German accent in the film, and then that film got pushed, and this one came in, so I had to switch it to Swiss German. So I started working with him for a couple of months, and then uh, I just went with the character, and I was trying to figure out. I would do things and I'd say something. And one time he, he said, well, that sounds like Tommy Wasu and you don't want it to sound like that. And I go, maybe I do. And this one was Arnold Schwarzenegger. Maybe I do. Maybe that's what I'm going for. And it felt, it just, it, it came like that through the work, through the process of trying to speak with the, uh, an accent and then be over the top and be crazy and be insane with it and have so much fun uh, and be believable in it. That's all I wanted to do. But I, I, I had a lot of fun creating Miley, or you know, he was already written for me, but creating him in my head and making those words become mine and the reactions that I would do and how I would deliver a line for it, what it would be. I, I didn't think he could just play like you know, straightforward, like you know, some places where you're not as much emotional. This one, I just wanted to be like, What you know, and, and <laughs> it, it, it felt right for me, mm -hmm. and I could, and you can tell when. You know, someone's having a good time with a role, and it really does make a big difference. Yeah. All right. How about for you, Alice? I think for me, it, I found I'd done a lot of theater before now. And obviously, when you're rehearsing a show, you normally would rehearse in chronological order, and then every night you perform in chronological order. Um, we did not shoot in any kind of chronological order whatsoever. You know, we were shooting at random points in the film and different days and like morning and afternoon. And I just, I wanted to make, this is such a nerdy answer, by the way, I'm really sorry. <laughs> but the, basically I would make sure that every scene I knew, like, I, like every day I'd wake up and go, what scenes have I got today? And I would make sure I knew what Heidi knew that day or in that scene, because actually we could be shooting something. I could have shot the last scene of the film and then the next day I'm shooting the second scene of the film. And I don't, Heidi doesn't know the ending. Heidi doesn't know about Helvetia or about, she's not met Miley yet or Knorr and things like that. So I did a lot of like theory stuff um, for, from that perspective. Um, but yeah, again, you know, I, I looked at people like Uma Thurman playing Kill Bill and Lena Headey and Sarah Connor Chronicles were big big inspirations for me because I'm a massive fan of those two and actually being able to take a role where she is the heroine but she's not a superhero she doesn't have any powers she is just who she is and it's about finding that strength and actually for me in Kill Bill and in Sarah Connor Chronicles both of those women do that so I, I looked at those two for sure. Kill Bill never never would have guessed it. <laughs> 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 all right um any moment of any moment that was a personal favorite to film hmm there were quite a few I mean Casper and I definitely had fun shooting uh together in the cell where Casper sniffed me um <laughs> that was fun um and it was very surreal for me especially because and I again they, they added this last minute and they didn't tell me, but they put that chain around my neck that says, oh, I smell so good because they, they cut this moment 
where um, Katia, the lovely Katia, who plays Rottweiler, she goes to sniff me and goes, and that's why they put that on me. And they cut her sniff out <laughs> because they thought there were too many sniffs in the scene. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that they cut it out. Yeah. I, I, I loved doing that scene with you. I loved working with her. I loved watching her and, and, and seeing her uh, in her full mastery as this. And, you know, when you're watching a young actor uh actress uh come in and and and, and play a role and, and be so into it it was it was so much fun for me I, I i loved all the swiss actors i got to work with swiss german actors um so many talented people um i loved going into Knorley's office and you know giving him crap that was fun for me <laughs> especially with my bear poster in the background me fighting the bear <laughs> that they painted and i thought it was awesome i wish i had gotten that but good it's a shame and All right, last question. Here's the biggie. Heidi and Clara, when can I get to see it? <laughs> I think if we all make enough noise about it, it, um, it will come quicker. It will come quicker. Now, I think this year is going to be very much a let's get mad Heidi out into the world and get people talking about her. And then next year, conversations will properly kick on. But there's definitely something in the works at the moment. Yeah, and, and you know, we got this Fathom event going. If this Fathom event... Uh, does really well. I think that that's all positive towards a a, a a second one. That's what I would guess. Hell yeah! If if they crowdfund it again, I would definitely throw in a few bucks of my own because it right. it sounds great. <laughs> all right, that's uh, that's all the time I have. Uh, lovely talking to you. Well, thank you. Lovely to you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. <laughs>